Hello students, uh, well, very good morning and welcome to my course, Basic Physics. This course is generally made for diploma degree students of first year, first semester. Myself, uh, Gopal Chakraborty, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management, Baripu. You can personally meet me at college premises ground floor physics lab. You can also send me a mail regarding your doubt and query to my given mail address that is godphysics6 at the rate gmail.com or gopal.chakravarti underscore g k c e m at the rate j i s group dot o r g student i have a youtube channel the link is given here so you can subscribe my youtube channel for more videos and if you find any doubt you can contact me at my given mail address uh, i have already uploaded lots of video on this subject basic physics as per your state council syllabus so for this subject i am your subject teacher now uh, the course pages are www.websce.org and www.websce.co.in The syllabus for the subject basic physics is already uploaded in the university website. So the students uh, if you want you can download the syllabus for first year first semester from the state council website as i have mentioned here so the title of this subject is basic physics it is under the category of basic science course it has a credit tree two lecture per week and two practical per week this course is generally made for diploma degree students of first year first semester so all the branches except architecture photography multimedia and printing technology apart from these four departments rest of the departmental students have to study this basic physics as a part of their curriculum of first year first semester so uh, as per our college we have only electrical and electronics and communication these two departments so uh, these two departmental students have to study this basic physics for their first year first semester syllabus now uh, the topic that i will going to be discuss in today's class uh, fluid mechanics pascal's law multiplication of force pressure inside a liquid applications of pascal's law uh, some simple numerical problem so these also under unit 2 that is general properties of matter prerequisite for these topics are basic mathematical knowledge to solve the problems knowledge of basic concepts of science such as physics visualization and analytical approach towards the subject is very much necessary now the course objectives are learn about the properties of fluid pascal's law multiplication of force and also learn about pressure inside a liquid now uh, the course outcome uh, able to know the properties of fluid Pascal's law multiplication of force. So, after completion of this course, students will able to 
calculate what will be the force or how the uh, fluid behaves for a particular uh, given temperature or pressure or some uh, due to the presence of some pressure force etc okay now uh, today the topic that i will going to be discuss it's about all about fluids okay so uh, in every day in daily life you have this with the uh, defined type of fluids okay uh, you uh, maybe think about fluid means it's a uh, liquid or water or oil so on but no the liquid is not an example of fluid only okay the gas is also example of fluids okay uh, so uh, now as you deal with in daily life all the different type of fluids now you have to know what are the corresponding properties of that fluid and how the fluid behaves when it moves or when it's static okay so uh, the fluid mechanics actually deal with that application or properties of the fluid okay now uh, i would like to introduce the chapter because uh, you need to know what is fluids uh, in details so uh, fluid in physics uh, fluid uh, is a substance that continuously deform under an applied shear stress or external force fluids are a phase of matter and include liquid gases and plasmas so uh, they are substances with zero shear modulus so there are substances with zero shear modulus you know where shear modulus that is uh, stress by strain lateral stress by so uh, the shear modulus the a by a by theta okay uh, so here in simple terms the substances which cannot resist any shear force applied to them so although the term fluids includes both the liquid and gas phases in common uses fluid is often used as a synonym of liquid as uh, all of you are thinking about so with no implication that gas would also be present this colloquial uses of the term is also common in medicine and in nutrition so uh, in physics liquids form a free surface that is a surface not created by the container while uh, gases do not now uh, viscoelastic fluids like silicone appears to behave similar to a solid when a certain force is applied so um, also substances with a very high viscosity such as peat appears to behave like a solid okay so uh, in physics uh, fluids has a shows lots of properties is there so they not resisting permanent deformation uh, resisting only relative rates of deformation in a dissipative fractional manner also uh, the ability to flow okay so these properties are typically a function of their inability to support a shear force or shear stress in static equilibrium so in contrast a uh, solid response to the shear either with a spring like restoring force uh, which means the that deformation are reversible or they require certain initial stress uh, before they deform now solid uh, respond with a restoring force to both shear stresses uh, and to the normal stresses both uh, compressive and tensile in contrast ideal fluids only responds uh, with restoring force to a normal stress cause called pressure okay so fluid uh, can be subjected to both compressive stress corresponding to uh, positive pressure and to tensile stress now corresponding to the negative pressure 
both solid and liquids also have a tensile strength which uh, when exceed in solid makes irreversible deformation and fracture and liquid causes the onset of cavitation so these are the basics of liquids or fluids uh, now i will discuss in details step by step what is fluids and what are the details of pascal's law associated with that fluids so uh, in physics both the liquid and gases are called fluids okay so fluid is a substance uh, that continuously deforms under applied shear force or external force so fluids are place of matter and includes liquid gases plasma etc so here uh, you can see the diagram okay so when you pour some liquid in a container so you always see that liquid uh, assumes the shape of that container okay and in case of gas particle also if you put a uh, gas within some uh, closed uh, volume or surface in some container so the gas will be filled up this whole container is filled up with by the gas okay so like this uh, that's way uh, you can say that it uh, cannot it cannot resist that shear stress okay so that's why it uh, it can't it uh, assumes or it takes the size or shape of the container where you pour it so this is your fluid now um, there is an important characteristic of fluids okay uh, that means both the liquid and gases uh, shows these important characteristics so uh, these important characteristics are say the atom or molecules in a fluid are arranged in a random manner okay a fluid cannot withstand tangential or shearing stress for an indefinite period it brings to flow when a shearing stress is applied a fluid has no definite shape of its own it ultimately assumes the shape of the containing vessels so a fluid has no modulus of rigidity a fluid can exert or withstand a force in a direction perpendicular to its surface so a fluid does have a bulk modulus of rigidity so these are the important characteristics of the fluid as per the first one as the uh, atoms and molecules or all are arranged in a random manner that must be because uh, when you put it uh, whether it may be a liquid or it may be a gas uh, in some container uh, due to this random manner arrangement these are actually starts to flow and take all the uh, volume inside the container so then uh, you can see that it this assumes the actual shape of this container so it uh, has no definite shape of its own so these are the important characteristics that the fluid shows now as we know that fluid are of two types one is liquid and another one is gas so you need to know what are the difference between gas and liquid okay so here that table shows that uh, basic differences between gas and liquids so as per definition gas it has no definite shape and it takes the shape of the container so uh, in case of that liquid it has a definite volume but no definite shape in terms of energy gas has a highest form of energy and liquid is a medium of energy next in terms of a molecular arrangement random in case of gas it is random but more uh, sparsely arranged uh, in case of liquid random but little sparsely arranged uh, as per uh, comparison on the basis of motion of the molecules in case of gas uh, the molecules are free random and constant 
in case of uh, liquid the molecules are shows a brownian motion uh, molecular attraction uh, for the gas is minimum whereas that liquid is medium with respect to the solid now storage facility so uh, for a gas you need a closer closed container to store and liquid you need a container to store uh, it may be closed may not be closed uh, shape uh, gas has no fixed shape or volume here for the liquid no fixed shape but it has a volume uh, compressibility in case of gas it is very uh, easy to compress and in case of liquid it is nearly difficult but not very difficult also uh, fluidity uh, it flows in all direction gases can be flow in very first way in very first manner and all direction and in case of liquid always flows from higher to lower level now intermolecular space uh, in case of gas the intermolecular spaces are very large and in case of liquid it is less with respect to the gas uh, speed of sound in gas is lowest among solid and liquids and in case of liquid the speed of sound slower than solid but faster than gas so these are the possible comparison between uh, liquid and gas as per some uh, different properties so these are very important so as uh, today I am going to discuss about fluid mechanics. So what is that fluid mechanics? Fluid mechanics is the science that deals with the behavior of fluid at rest or in motion. And also the interaction of fluids with solids or maybe with the other fluids at the boundary. So this is the fluid mechanics. Now uh, you can segregate uh, two different type of fluid mechanics is there. One is called fluid statics, another is called fluid dynamics. So what is fluid statics? So many fluids problem do not involve motion, rather concerned with the pressure distribution in a static fluid. When uh, the fluid velocity is zero, known as hydrostatic condition and the pressure variation is due to the weight of the fluid. Uh, the important areas of fluid statistics include pressure distribution in atmosphere and ocean, design of manometer pressure instruments, forces on submerged flat and curved surface, buoyancy on a submerged body and behavior of floating bodies. So, these are the possible important areas of fluid static so that means in that case fluids must be at rest so there will be no motion of that fluid uh, and fluid dynamics in physics uh, and engineering fluid dynamics is a uh, sub uh, discipline of fluid mechanics that describe the flow of the fluids see it may be for liquids as well as gas also it has several sub-disciplines include aerodynamics, uh, the study of air and other gases in motion and uh, hydrodynamics, the study of liquid in motion. So these are the uh, basic two types of fluid mechanics that are going to be discussed. So as today I am only discussing about fluid statistics so and uh, corresponding Pascal's law. So some important definition that you must need to know uh, before proceeding, before further proceeding. So uh, the first one is uh, pressure. Okay. So it is uh, the normal force exerted by a fluid per unit area. In a system, the unit and dimension of pressure can be written as Newton per meter square. Okay, uh, fluid pressure is a measurement of force per unit area. So fluid pressure can be caused by gravity, acceleration or forces in closed containers. Since the fluid has no definite shape, uh, its pressure applies in all directions. So you can write that pressure P equals to A by A force by, e by unit area. 
Now, density, the density of the substances is the quantity of matter contained in unit volume of the substances. It is expressed in three different ways, mass, density, that is rho equals to mass by volume, specific weight rho into g, and relative uh, density by specific gravity of water. So, specific gravity equals to uh, density with of the medium to that in water at 4 degrees C. So, uh, the units are uh, for mass density it is kg per meter cube, for specific weight it will be newton per meter cube and so on. Now, thrust, uh, what, what is thrust? The total normal force exerted by a liquid at rest on the surface uh, in contact with it is called fluid thrust. So, a same unit of fluid thrust is a newton and it is a vector quantity. So, you can see here the diagram as per diagram. So, uh, for the body which is floating on uh, some liquid, so due to that weight, up thrust will act on that body. Uh, so, these are the examples. Now, the important thing is that fluid exert a force always perpendicular to the surface. Here, we consider a container uh, and the direction of the force is applied, that is, uh, shows the direction uh, A, B. Uh, now, uh, it has two components, okay, one is along OC and another one is along OD. So, the tangential component OC that is equal to R cos theta and the uh, normal component that is OD equal to R sin theta. So, since the liquid cannot resist any tangential force, so the liquid near O should uh, begin to flow along OC. But uh, here, as we are dealing with uh, fluid static sticks, liquid, so this liquid is at rest. So, the force along OC must be zero. So, from there you can write R cos theta is zero. As R not equals to zero because R is a reaction force uh, of uh, BA. So, uh, cos theta will be zero. So, theta will be 90 degree. Hence, you can prove that a liquid always exerts force perpendicular to the surface of the container at every point. So, uh, there are these are the practical applications of pressure. Uh, you can uh, deal with in daily life, that is a sharp knife cut better than a blunt one. The area of the sharp edge is much less than the area of the blunt edge. Uh, for the same total force, the effective force per unit area pressure is more for the sharp edge than the blunt edge. Hence, a sharp knife cuts better. Uh, railway tracks are laid on a wooden sleeper. Uh, the spreads force due to the weight of the train on a larger area and hence reduce the pressure considerably. This is, uh, in turn prevents the yielding of the ground under the weight of the train. Uh, it is difficult for a man to walk on the sand while the camel walks easily on the sand. So, in spite of the fact that a camel is much heavier than a man, this is because camel's feet have a larger area than the feet of the man. So, due to the larger area, pressure is less. So, uh, pins and nails are made of made to have a pointed ends. These uh, pointed ends have very small area. When a force is applied uh, overhead of a pin or nail, it transmits a larger pressure force per unit on the surface and hence easily penetrate the surface. So, these are very important uh, to know the practical application based on the concept of pressure. Now, the another most important one that is Pascal's law. So, what is Pascal's law? A change in pressure at any point in an enclosed fluid at rest is transmitted undiminished to all point in the fluid. So, pressure exerted on a fluid in an enclosed container is transmitted equally and diminishes to all parts of the container and acts at right angle to the enclosed wall. So, uh, in alternate definition, you can say that the pressure applied to any part of the enclosed liquid will be transmitted equally in all direction through the fluid. As you know, the pressure uh, P equals to H rho into G. So, that change in pressure, uh, you can write del P equals to rho, the density G, acceleration due to gravity and del is the change in height or change in depth. So, this is your Pascal's law. So, uh, as I am telling you, so now I am going to uh, express, define or find out the pressure exerted by a 
liquid column of height h okay so first we consider a liquid block of height h and cross sectional area a okay so uh, the weight of the liquid column that acts in a downward direction that is w equals to mass of the liquid into g so mass of the liquid that means volume into density so volume means area into height into density into g so a h rho z g this is the weight of the liquid column now pressure exerted by the liquid column on the bottom of the vessels that's pressure equals to thrust per unit area so thrust is nothing but a force or weight of the liquid so it is a a h rho g whole divided by a that means divided by the cross sectional area so that gives you the p that pressure exerted by the liquid at depth h so p equals to h into rho into g So now I will show you uh, applications of Pascal's law. As uh, the Pascal's law says, the pressure, uh, if you apply a pressure in a uh, co contained liquid or fluid, it will be transmitted uh, equal, and equal uh, magnitude in all the uh, surface of the container. Okay, Perpen and act in a perpendicular way. So here, hydraulic lift is an example or applications of Pascal's law. So how it is work? Hydraulic lift is an application of Pascal law. It is used to lift heavy object. Uh, if is a force multiplier, it will act as a force multiplier. So how? It consists of two cylinder. One is C1, another one is C2, connected to each other by a pipe. Now the cylinder are fitted with weight tight frictionless pistons of different cross section areas. The cylinders and the pipe contains a liquid. So suppose a force F is applied on the smaller piston of cross-sectional area small a. Then the pressure exerted on that liquid P equals to F by small a. This is the uh, pressure exerted on that liquid having smaller piston. Now according to Pascal law, same pressure P is also transmitted uh, to the larger piston of cross-sectional area capital A. So force on larger piston is F equals to P, the pressure, same pressure into area, larger area, capital A. That means F by small a into capital A. That means capital A by small a into F. As capital A is greater than small a, that means the area of larger piston must be greater than the area of the smaller piston. So therefore, at capital F, this force is much more larger than the small f. Hence, uh, by making the ratio capital A by small a large, a very heavy load can be lifted by the application of a small force. However, there is no gain of work. The work done by force small f is equal to the work done by f. So the piston P1 has to be moved down by a larger distance compared to the distance move up by a piston P2. So this is the application of Pascal's law. Now we will solve some simple numerical on this uh, chapter. Now the numericals that is first one. What will be the length of mercury column in a barometer tube when the atmospheric pressure is 75 centimeter? of mercury and the tube is inclined at angle 60 degree with the horizontal direction. So here the height of that liquid that is 75 centimeter angle theta is 60 degree. So if L is the length of the mercury column in the barometer tube, so you can write capital H, uh, small h by L equals to sine 60. So 75 by L equals to root 3 by 2 from where you can calculate the length, required length that is equals to 86.6 centimeter. Next one, what is the pressure on a swimmer 10 meter below the surface of the lake? Here the height or depth that is 10 meter, density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube, uh, acceleration due to gravity that is 9.8 meter per second square. So pressure on that swimmer 10 meter below the surface of the lake that is uh, pressure capital P is equals to PA plus H rho G. So that's equals to 1 into 10 to the power 5. Uh, plus 10 into 1000 into 9.8 so it is 1.98 into 10 to the power 5 pascal or more 2 atmospheric pressure atm now the next one uh, 
liquid stands uh, at the same level in the E2 when at rest. If A is the area of cross section and small g is the acceleration due to gravity, what will be the difference in the height h of the liquid in the two uh, limbs of E2 when the system is given an acceleration A towards right as shown in figure? Okay. Now, uh, if A is the length of the horizontal portion of the tube, the mass of the liquid in that portion can be written as area into height into density into A. So, area into uh, length into density. So, uh, mass is A L into rho. Now, force exerted on the above mass towards left, that is uh, A into L into rho into A. So, due to the difference in height, h in the height of the liquid of the two limbs the downward force exerted on the liquid in the horizontal portion so uh, that's equals to h into rho into g into a so you can write these two are uh, equal comparing these two you can write h rho g into a that's equals to a l rho into small a so from there you can write the height h equals to l a by g so uh, these are the reference book you can refer. The evaluation process is same. Students have to appear for a 70 marks in semester exam and 20 marks mid semester exam and rest 10 marks for attendance, assignment, interaction. So all of you have hopefully under understand and enjoy today's class. In next class, I will discuss the rest part of the fluid mechanics. So thank you.